What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily, your source for daily tech news every single day, 365 days a year, two videos every single day. Guys, we have a few stories. We have a whole lot of questions. With that said, let's dive into the tech news. The first story of the day is about the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. I actually just released a video about the five features that I'm most excited about for that phone. So if you wanna watch that, it'll be linked at the end of this video. Just click on it and you can watch it. But ultimately, Google has put out a tweet officially announcing that they're going to unveil the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, the new Google phone, on October 19th at 10 a.m. Pacific the Pixel 6 launch, Pixel Fall launch, tune in October 19th, 10 a.m. Pacific. So when they launch this phone, you can almost guarantee that they're going to, at least at the end of the event, put it up for pre-order. So if you're looking to get this phone, you're looking at about two weeks from now, being able to see it, pre-order it, and then it should be in your hands within the next seven to 10 days after the event. Super excited about getting my hands on the Pixel 6 Pro. And when I do, I will definitely have some videos out for you guys on that phone. Here's a little update about One UI 4.0. This is from Ice Universe saying Samsung listened to users' opinions, improved the animation, and added wallpaper blur and zoom effects to make it look more natural. This is the official version of One UI 4.0 animation, which is being optimized. Look forward to it. So if you have the 4.0 update beta on your phone, or you're thinking about getting it and you want some of the improvements, they will optimize the performance overall of the animations and the overall look and feel of the operating system, which is always going to be good because you want that smoother, you know, just you want the phone to feel super smooth in every aspect and not have any jagged edges. And it looks like Samsung's doing that. Next up is taking the best of both worlds for a lot of people. It's taking a folding phone, but even changing the design of it and also throwing in a note phone and putting those two phones together to create an amazing looking device. Check this out. These are coming from some trademarks that Samsung has put in and Let's Go Digital has created renders onto this. They're calling it the Galaxy Z Fold Note. They're saying Technizo Concept, that's the person that created these, brings patented Samsung Galaxy smartphones with wraparound screen and an S Pen dock to life in a series of realistic 3D renders. Not saying this phone's definitely gonna come out. It might not even look like this, it might not be. It's really just a concept of what this guy is thinking based off some uh, official stuff that has come out and just putting it all together. And you can see that it has the wraparound display, which looks super futuristic. It wraps around all the way to the back of the display with the triple camera setup. You then see it completely wide open, what that display would look like if you had it. Again, it would wrap around on that. I believe it's the right edge of the display. And then you could have it kind of closed out um, when it's completely wide open. It would like just be all back on the back there and wouldn't have any bit of the display showing. And then when you do have it also opened up, you could have it opened up on half the screen and then the other half would be the cameras and then you have it fully on the front. It's just a, a really interesting looking display and having triple cameras and the S Pen. And the main thing about this that you'd want to be interested in is obviously the S Pen. So the S Pen will be docked onto the back of the device, looks like magnetically and be able to charge it and use it and have all that Bluetooth functionality. And who wouldn't want a Galaxy Z Fold phone that with a wraparound display, triple camera setup, uh, an S Pen that attaches magnetically to the back of the phone. So you're getting a futuristic fold, you're getting a futuristic note phone. Why wouldn't you want something like that? And that'll be your question of the day. Would you want something like that? Or do you like the traditional Galaxy Z Fold phone that we have right here, this kind of design? Let me know in the comments down below. With that said, guys, let's get into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that. First question comes from New York's finest. Will next year's Samsung phones have graphene batteries? They are supposed to charge faster, be slimmer, and last over 60% longer than its current lithium batteries. Highly doubt it. Haven't heard anything of, of anyone really using anything with the, those batteries. So I'm gonna say no to that. Shannon Lee, question. Do you have to put your full three in airplane mode to get it to connect 
connect back to the cell network because I'm on Verizon having this issue. Just curious if other people are having it. I think you said you are on at and I don't have that issue. I don't have to ever put my phone on airplane mode to do anything except when I go on an airplane to shut kind of all the radios off. It's the only time I use airplane mode and I don't have any network connectivity issues, have them be on Wi-Fi or my cell network. Looks like it's a Verizon only issue, or maybe it's your phone and you just need to reset it. It's like an app causing that issue, but I would guess it's Verizon's network. Mustafa Ahmed, I'm very excited for the Pixel Fold. Are you going to keep your Z Fold 3 after you get the Pixel Fold? Do you think Pixel Fold is going to be similar to the Z Fold or Z Fold 3? Well, we checked out some renders of what it could possibly look like. I really think it's gonna look very close and identical to the Z Fold 2. I think the price will be lower by a couple hundred bucks versus the Z Fold 3. I think the overall usage of it will be slightly different than a Z Fold 3 because you won't get S Pen support, and at least we don't think you will. And you probably won't obviously have a lot of that customization that's already built into the Galaxy phones. Um, so would I use that and drop my Z Fold 3? There's a real good chance the Z Fold 3 didn't excite me as much as the Z Fold 2 did because it's really just a, you know, kind of lateral design. It wasn't like a vertical, like, oh my God, reaching for the stars kind of change for me getting that phone. For someone that never had it, yeah, it's a, it's a big jump. But when you come from Z Fold 2 to that, it's not a huge jump. So yeah, I mean, I'm pretty stoked about the Pixel Fold. That's, that might be the phone that kicks me off or maybe even the Surface Duo 2, like I've said, might kick me off the Z Fold 3, but we'll see. Marcos Lemos, any idea when eSIM compatibility will come to the Z Fold 2 or Z Fold 3? I haven't heard anything about eSIM compatibility in terms of the USA characters being able to use it. So I'm gonna go with not anytime soon. The Duke, having multiple smart devices, Google Home, mini display, phone, is there a way to designate one to be the main to pay attention? Uh, for example, going to bed, I'll say, play sound de decibels for stress level, stress relief, and they all light up and start doing stuff. I don't think there's any way to do what you want. What I do notice is when I do something with the, the hey remark in there, I do notice that my smart displays kind of override my phones unless my display just didn't hear me. So your display should be the ult or the display or the speaker really should be the ultimate one. And then at that point, if it's all, if they're all within the same vicinity and you say that, it's gonna be the one that heard you first and reacts first that overrides it. But I don't know of a way of making one like the default and the other one's kind of like bow down to the master. Drew, who are you thinking when I'm thinking? It looks like a double hinge if that's true. Seam, he's talking about the, the render that we checked out yesterday for the Pixel Fold and it kind of having at least the, the trademarks of it showing that there was like a double hinge rather than like the traditional fold in display. Um, I still think it's gonna look like the Z Fold 3. They're getting the display from Samsung, so you get to expect a lot of the phones that are folding are gonna have the same exact design to what the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and 3 are. Jerome Gold says, great content. Question, my phones show 5G, but next to it, it also shows Wi-Fi. So, if they're both on, which one am I actually on? Thank you, love your videos. Mine does the same thing, I believe. I remember seeing the same thing. Um, I can't even tell, it's too dark. Mine said the same thing, You're, so Wi-Fi is always gonna override 5G by default, unless you have it off. So if you see both Wi-Fi and 5G connected at the same time, it's gonna use Wi-Fi. Long question from Adam David. Here's a question or two. I have a Z Fold 3 that I was going to sell because it is so big and it hurts my arthritic hands. I got the Z Flip 3 and all, I like it, and it's nice to have a much lighter phone. However, two main things are making it so I want might switch back. One of the main reasons is I was okay with switching was that since I work from home and have my tablet here, I end up using it a lot to answer calls and text. Before I got my tablet, I would use Dex to answer them, but on the flip, as far as I can tell, these two options are not available. Do you know of any way to get these activated? Were they blocked by Verizon? My flip is Verizon and my fold is unlocked. Am I the only one who finds the lack of these two features big enough to deal to not switch? So if you're talking about the Z Flip 3 having DeX, for some reason it just doesn't have DeX. It's probably maybe because the lack of RAM that it has only has eight gigs of RAM. So, but I know their tablets don't have eight gigs of RAM either, but yeah, it doesn't have DeX. You're not gonna get DeX. Doesn't matter if you're on the unlocked or carrier versions, you're not going to get it. So if you need DeX, you're gonna have to use, especially on the phone side, um, if you, out of those two phones anyway, you have to get a Galaxy Z uh, Fold 3. Arthritic hands, can you use a pop socket? Can you use something that allows you to 
to prop the phone up and hold it a little bit easier. I know my mom has arthritis and her hands are pretty messed up like they're like that. Um, I don't know, get some kind of phone grip. Maybe that'll help you hold it better. James Crayhall says, do you think they will put out a foldable that actually has a good aspect ratio have the fold three that's my biggest complaint everything works sort of but would love it to work as a normal phone and tablet i don't think they're going to put a 16 by 9 aspect ratio out I, I i actually think this is a good design it's it's the app manufacturers that need to fix their apps so it's completely compatible with the aspect ratios of these phones that's really the problem and if samsung worked with the big phone, uh, big apps, apps out there, Facebook, um, which looks fine. Uh, Instagram for sure definitely needs to be, you know, fixed and updated. Samsung had a huge relationship with that. But at one point, putting their camera software into the main camera app of Galaxy phones. So that needs to be done. Or if that can't be done, Samsung really needs to create something that automatically formats the app so it fits perfectly. I know you can change the aspect ratio in the settings of this, but it still doesn't fully work. I know Instagram has issues. And our last question is going to be coming from Tara Pilly Industries. If I made my own phone company, would you get it if it had super fast processor, stronger frames to keep from bending, and also flushed cameras? Whatever you would make, I would buy and you know it. Thanks for watching guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the word question. I will answer it tomorrow and we'll see you down the road.